Sulu works just fine. Why fix what isn't broken? I don't consider Sulu to be broken, but there are a couple of different angles to look at this from. Joining the Rust Ultras hub isn't a strategy to move GPL code out of the Linux ecosystem. Let's check the first comment, which is actually mine. Hey Jun, what do you do and how are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, so I'm a VP of engineering at Canonical, which means I look after collection of engineering teams. More recently, I've been focused on Ubuntu, the desktop server and foundations team. For the majority of my time at Canonical, we've been focused on some of our cloud products like Juju. Just woke up in the open source multiverse. Can someone explain it like M5, what sudo and sudo rs are? So sudo is a really common command on Linux that's used to temporarily elevate privileges. So if you need to run a command as an administrator and your normal user that you log in isn't an administrator, you can type sudo before that command and it will offer you the chance to enter your password. And if you get your password correct, it will run that command in the context of the administrative user, the root user on Linux. Sudo RS is a modern re-implementation of that tool. The original was written about 30 years ago, Sudo RS aims to re-implement that tool from the ground up as a kind of clean implementation in the Rust programming language with the goal of better memory safety and a more resilient implementation of the original tool. First side quest for you, it's the one-liner. You have 10 seconds for the next reaction. Read the article, cool words, no idea what they mean. Good. Well, the good news is we're going to dig into that over the next few minutes. Memory leak 101. So a memory leak is about when an application tries to allocate some memory in order to do something, but there are not strict controls on how the application clears up that memory, or perhaps it keeps allocating too much memory. So what happens is the amount of memory consumed by the application at runtime is dramatically more and potentially ever increasing beyond what the developer intended. C has been there for ages, what's the deal with Rust? So I think the best way to think about this is Rust was kind of one of the early languages that could be seen as kind of the next generation of system programming languages. The syntax is quite different and it comes with a lot more guarantees. Critically, Rust introduced a thing called the borrow checker and the borrow checker is all about the Rust compiler trying to enforce memory safety and hint to the developer how they might be misusing memory. So Rust can be a little bit more difficult to get started with, but because the compiler is so much more pedantic and much more in depth in terms of what it checks, it means the developers can ship code with a bit more confidence and feel like if they ship the code and it compiles, it's much more likely to behave how they intended for it to behave without any kind of unintended side effects. Joining the Rust Ultras, huh? Um, I don't think so. I haven't been a Rust developer for very long. I actually learned it last year. I believe quite firmly in using the right tools for the job. I didn't select sudo rs because it was written in Rust. I selected sudo rs because it's a modern re-implementation of a security critical tool written in a memory safe language. On this occasion, that happens to be Rust. Sudo works just fine. Why fix what isn't broken? Um, that's a very good point. And I don't think, I don't consider sudo to be broken, but there are a couple of different angles to look at this from. One is our ability to keep evolving and maintaining that code base and having a more modern code base in a language with an ecosystem like Rust is going to make that easier for us. Additionally, there are features in the original Sudo which were implemented, which seemed probably like a good idea at the time, but as security practices and understanding have evolved, there are either better ways to do those things or even some of those things are now considered a bit of a security anti. So Sudo RS being a clean run re-implementation means that they've had an opportunity to revisit some of those choices, potentially put out a more secure implementation of the original tool. I think it's time for the second side quest. It's a rock, paper, scissors, and winner is going to do the subscribe CTA. Are you ready? I'm ready. Rock, paper, scissors. You I win. won. Yeah, you have to do it. I have to do it. I thought you have to do it if I no, won. No, it's the winner. Okay, with well, practice, you should definitely like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Let's go to the next comment, which is this one. That took a while. That took a while. Uh, so I guess this refers to us, you know, maybe not keeping up. I think in reality, changes like this, while a lot of people won't notice much of a difference, are actually more significant in some ways than they may seem. So in order for us to make this change, we have to be very confident in our Rust toolchain in the distribution, how we package Rust dependencies. We have tens of millions of Ubuntu users and instances around the world. And we need to make sure that we adopt projects like this at a time when it gives them a nice boost, it gives them some adoption but balance that with the need to keep stability and a consistent experience in the distribution. Thanks for memory safe sudo RS. You're welcome. And uh, there's plenty more of this to come. It won't always be Rust utils. It won't always be replacing system utilities, but you should see a definitive push towards 
the modernization of Ubuntu and the implementation of utilities in modern languages and modern toolkits to try and keep Ubuntu as contemporary and as useful to the kind of widest audience we possibly can. Any advantages over Sudo? Well, yes, obviously it's written in Rust. No, but um, on a, <laughs> I think one of the main advantages really is to do with the contribution model. One of the nice things about a code base written in Rust is it enables, in my view, a much broader base of contributors to take part in the development process with confidence. So something like Sudo is very critical, and I think that can be quite intimidating for people to want to contribute to it. With Rust, there are certain features of the language, things like the borrow checker, things like exhaustive pattern matching, a very strong type system, which mean that people can contribute with more confidence and we can build up essentially the next generation of open source contributors who will build the next generation of awesome tools like Sudo that we've all relied on for 30 years. Additional win, better defaults, removing unneeded configuration. Yeah, I, th I think that's exactly it. And actually, this is a theme for Ubuntu over the next few years, to take a long, hard look at the tools we've always shipped and see whether the fact that we've always shipped them is a good reason to keep shipping. What I want to make sure we're doing is shipping the best of open source that we can in every release. And as much as I enjoy tinkering with my computer and configuring things, what I actually want to do is make sure that the default experience is as optimal as possible for as many people as possible. I think it's time for the last side quest and I actually contacted someone you know who had an interesting question for you. Let's watch it. Hi John, how critical is safety to Ubuntu and what concessions are we willing to make in its name? Okay, thank you Guillaume. Yes, I think safety fundamentally has to be critical to Ubuntu. It is a core part of what we have been delivering for 20 years and it's relied upon by people in our community and it's certainly relied upon by our kind of commercial customers, particularly in our long-term support releases. Security is always a trade-off between convenience and various other things. I'm not looking to make egregious changes in the name of security. We don't need to become paranoid about it, but we do need to start planning for how we keep Ubuntu as secure as it has been for the last 20 years. Is it a strategy to move GPL code out of the Linux ecosystem? Categorically not. Most of Canonical's work is done with a GPL license. Most new projects that we start are GPL licensed and they will continue to be GPL licensed. There is no getting away from the fact that much of the freedom we enjoy in the open source world is a result of many projects like the Linux kernel adopting the GPL license. The fact that core utils and sudo rs diverge from that shouldn't, in my view, be seen as a threat. At the end of the day, this isn't canonical rewriting this code with a non-GPL license. This is canonical adopting what appears to be a very thoughtful and well-maintained set of projects whose values align with ours. Why would we have to type three extra characters? The answer is you won't. So the command on Ubuntu will still just be sudo. It will come from the sudo rs package, but what the user types will still just be sudo. So you get that one for free. C and Rust bros are fighting for their life while this is more of a philosophical dilemma rather than something that will impact everyday users. Interesting comment. Uh, I think what's worth noting here, and one of the things that's really impressed me with the team working on sudo rs is that they are in contact with the original maintainer of the original sudo. And in fact, while they've been studying sudo with a view to re-implementing it, they have found bugs and they have found issues. And not only have they gone and rectified them in their own implementation, but they have also submitted code to fix the original implementation. They described it to me as not a hostile takeover, but really like a handshake across generations of software, which I thought was a really nice way of thinking about it. So I don't see this as a fight. I see this as a natural evolution and even one that is happening with the collaboration of the original authors. So Rust is popular with younger developers. Moves like this bring more of them into Linux and open source. I think this is probably true. Rust is more popular with younger devs, which I guess is a natural side of the fact that it's newer. Right? So like Rust wasn't around 20 years ago. And so I think anything we can do to encourage the next generation or an, another generation into open source development, we should do it. And I do see Rust as a positive in this regard. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in episode two.